Governments want Facebook to delay further encryption, Signal fixes a snooping exploit, and an Android Zero Day is being used in the wild. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for October 8, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash threatwire. It's because of the generosity of people that watch this show that I'm able to make it every single week, so thank you so much. Also, I have some big news. I am keynoting at the Texas Cyber Summit this weekend, and I would love to see you there. My keynote is on Saturday morning, and I will likely try to get a group together to go to a bar or two uh, this weekend on the San Antonio Riverwalk. So make sure to follow me. I'm at snubs, that's S-N-U-B-S on Twitter for all the information and news and announcements. And now on to the news of this show. BuzzFeed News, of all places, obtained a letter written by several political figures to Facebook, cryptically asking Facebook to not implement encryption, but if they do, make sure that it has a backdoor, although they did not use the word backdoor. U.S. Attorney General William Barr, U.K. Home Secretary Preeti Patel, Australian Minister for Home Affairs Peter Dutton, and Acting U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security Kevin K. Mikalinen together signed an open letter to Facebook detailing these requests. This appears to be in response to a blog Mark Zuckerberg did back in March, where he explained some security and privacy changes Facebook was planning to implement. Facebook wants to make several changes, including making private interactions a foundation for the platform, broadening encryption and safety measures like end-to-end -end encryption, reducing permanence of data, and increasing interoperability, like merging private messaging platforms from Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram. Facebook also wants to build better secure data storage infrastructure, such as building data centers in countries that have better security standards. The letter seems to respond mainly to encrypting Messenger. Now, this fight has gone on for ages, with the U.S. Department of Justice warning tech companies that they'd be going dark if end-to-end -end encryption was allowed. This isn't necessarily so, since end-to-end -end encryption would still allow a U.S. company to turn over metadata about a user, such as timestamps, IP addresses, location information, and who they converse with. Zuckerberg even mentions this in his blog. The letter, which can be seen in full via the BuzzFeed link, says, quote, we are writing to request that Facebook does not proceed with its plan to implement end-to-end -end encryption across its messaging services without ensuring that there is no reduction to user safety and without including a means for lawful access to the content of communications to protect our citizens. So they never say backdoor, but that's a backdoor, folks. The letter continues with statistics from the U.S. National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, showing that a large amount of reports were actually made by Facebook. This is quite timely because it ties in nicely with a new agreement between the U.S. and the U.K. that would allow for cross-border surveillance and data access between the two countries without barriers or restrictions, which could speed up cases from taking up to two years to only taking a few weeks or sometimes even just days. This is called the Cloud Act, which stands for Clarifying Lawful Overseas Use of Data Act. While the Cloud Act does allow for data sharing, it does not allow for a backdoor. Requests must still be legal, and it does not require any tech company to delay, remove, or backdoor encryption. So how does a company help with lawful cases, protecting against predators online, while still protecting our right to encryption? Check out the link in the letter below. I would love to know what you think. On October 4th, Signal, the end-to-end -end encrypted messaging platform, fixed a bug that would allow an attacker to auto-answer a call they placed on a target device without permission from the owner. This means an attacker could snoop on the audio around a device without the target knowing. It works on Signal's app, which has audio calls built in. It does not work for video calls because the application requires the user to physically enable camera access when making a video call for the camera to actually work. This does not affect iOS users, just the Android Signal app. Natalie Silvanovich at Google's Project Zero first discovered the flaw and said the iOS app would not allow for the same vulnerability because an error in the UI during an attack would cause an uninspected sequence of states to occur. 
If on Android, though, an attacker could use a modified version of the application to dial a call, then press their mute button, which would initiate the call on the receiver's side. It happens after the attacker places a call and during the ringing state. If the attacker hits their mute button fast enough, the receiver won't even see an alert, and the call will be picked up without their knowing. The Android app has a method called Handle Call Connected that makes the call finish connecting. This method is normally initiated when the receiver clicks accept on a call and when the caller gets connected to the accepted call. That connect for the caller can be initiated early by the attacker with a modified version of the application. Signal replied to this attack saying the receiver, or the target, would see a visible indicator that a call was in progress on their phone, assuming that they are actually looking at their phone at the time. They would also see a record of a call being placed in the conversation list within the Signal app. Now, since many public figures, journalists, and security researchers use the Signal app, this is a call for concern. So luckily, Signal did fix it quickly. Silvanovich's report was on September 27th, and Signal responded with version 4.47.7, which was released last week, which does have a patch. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. I am putting together the annual physical rewards for this year, so keep an eye on the updates on the Patreon page. Also, I want to start a security and privacy audio podcast as a part of the ThreatWire feed. That's my next Patreon goal, so if you want to help, check out my community. The link is in the description down below. And when you sign up, you will automatically get a physical reward after your first year of membership and every year thereafter. Also, a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, so keep them coming. We have more Android flaws! Yay! Alongside that signal vulnerability was a zero day that Google disclosed on October 4th. Thanks to my patrons for voting on Friday's story poll for this headliner. This is a great story. This zero day with CVE 2019-2215 is currently being used in the wild, so their public disclosure was necessary. The problem was reported by Maddie Stone of Google's Project Zero on September 26. The problem is within Android's operating system's kernel code, and if an attacker used it, this could allow them to gain root access on the device. As such, it is a high severity flaw. Strangely enough, this was first patched back in December of 2017 in kernels 3.18, 4.14, 4.4, and 4.9. Newer versions of the kernel were found to still be vulnerable, which means this affects phone models running Android 8 and later, including Pixel 1 and 2 and the XL versions, Huawei P20, Xiaomi Redmi 5A, the Note 5 and A1, Oppo A3, Moto Z3, Oreo LG devices, and Samsung S7, S8, and S9 phones. In total, 18 phones were tested and affected. It does not affect 3 or 3XL Pixel devices or the newer S10 line. The exploit requires little or no per-device customization, so an attacker could use the same code for several different models. Google's Threat Analysis Group, which is TAG, T-A-G for short, believe that this is currently being used in the wild, likely by a state-sponsored attacker. They put their sights on the NSO Group, which is an Israeli-based company that sells surveillance tools to governments. NSO stated that that they have nothing to do with the exploit, but since no technical information has been released, we have no way of telling one way or another. Now before you panic, luckily it would be very tough for an attacker to implement this hack on your device. You would have to install a malicious application that used the exploit, and if browsing the web via a mobile browser, that would require the attacker to chain the exploit with additional hacks. Specifically for the Chrome browser, they would need to change the exploit with an additional vulnerability to take advantage of the way Chrome renders content. According to Stone, it's a kernel privilege escalation bug accessible within the Chrome sandbox. Older models listed, alongside any not tested or named by Google Project Zero, will receive an update in October. Android partners have also received a patch on the Android Common kernel. Developers usually get 90 days to fix issues that Project Zero finds, but if they discover an issue like this one is actively being exploited in the wild, vulnerabilities are pushed to be published a week after discovery. Mad props to the ladies at Google's Project Zero this week for finding vulnerabilities and making us a little bit 
is safer. Now, before I leave, I would like to say thank you so much to Garn, Brandon, Torvos, Sneb23, Curtis, Brian, and David, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much. Y'all are awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.